Hey everyone. Well, it's Wednesday night, 7 p.m., which means it's time for the Midweek Word. We do a short word every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., right here how you're listening right now, on Facebook and on YouTube, except for the first Wednesday of the month, we do monthly prayer. We know that prayer is extremely important. So, tonight though, I have a short word for you. And you know, in my inbox once a month, I get a teaching letter from a minister named Rick Renner. And I've been getting these teaching letters, and some of them just really stand out to me. And one of them stood out to me uh, this month that he sent, and it was on thankfulness and being thankful. thankful. And really, there is power in being thankful. And this month, being November, a lot of people think about uh, thankfulness or thanksgiving because of the holiday, what they're thankful for. And so I think this is a really good subject to talk about this month. And the Bible talks a lot about thankfulness and the power of it. And But I also want to talk about what happens when we're unthankful. But before we go on, I want to say to all of our veterans, thank you. Because, you know, today is Veterans Day, and I want to thank you for your service, your sacrifice. Because without you and your service, we wouldn't have the freedoms we have here in America. So again, thank you so much for all of you who serve in our military and all of our branches. Thank you so much. So let's get into thankfulness and some of these words in the Bible. And I'm going to read off my notes some here tonight because I want to make sure that I get this accurate and get it correct because I want us to see what the word unthankful means. But to do that, we need to see what the word thankful um, you know, means in, in the Greek. And in the New Testament, there's a primary word that's used for thankfulness, and it's herostos, herostos. And... Um, you know, this Greek word is used throughout the New Testament, and it's derived from another Greek word where we get the word grace. And church, I'm going to tell you that to be thankful, a lot of times it takes the grace of God, especially when things around us are going haywire, things are going not the best, and we can begin to get unthankful. We need God's grace to be thankful especially when we don't feel like it. But thankfulness expresses the idea of one whose heart is thankful, grateful, or appreciative for various reasons. One scholar says that the Greek word herostos depicts an inward awareness of having been fortunate or well-treated. So what that means is that the word thankful projects the deep inward feeling of one who is thankful, grateful, or appreciative, those three things, for what one has received or how one's been treated by others. All three of these words, thankfulness, gratitude, and appreciation, are the expressions of a person who is thankful he has experienced some good event or a blessing, whether it's from God or from others, from their family members, friends, whoever around them. And these feelings depict someone who's grateful towards that person or a group of people who treated him kindly and is appreciative for what has happened. In 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 2, Paul said that many in society will become unthankful. And I want to read this verse. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. For, men's will be, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Now the word unthankful in the Greek is a uh, harastos. Basically, you're just putting the letter A in front of the word. And it, you, know, you fix it right to the front. And that little a has a canceling effect and literally changes the meaning of this word from thankful to unthankful in the Greek. It's just like the prefix we put the u in in front of thankful, and it cancels out thankfulness. It undoes it. Whether you have that u in or in the Greek, it's just this letter a that cancels it. A thankful person basically has become unthankful 
just by putting that prefix on there, that, that A. In other words, this person had a thankful attitude before, but for some reason that person has lost his thankful, grateful, and appreciative attitude and has become unthankful, and they're in that state. Now, unthankfulness is ingratitude and unappreciativeness, and it's filled their heart. It's filled their mind. Unthankfulness is a state, and being unthankful is a state of mind and a state of being that we do not want to be. As Paul was saying here, these things that he listed, you know, lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, and then he puts unthankful right there next to unholy. Unholy is right after that. That means this is something that's bad. It's negative, and it it can really bring you down. You don't have the power of God working in your life when you're unthankful. And so, rather than being appreciative for what has happened and recognize how appreciative uh, we are for others, we can become unthankful if we give in to that state of mind. A person who's filled with ingratitude and unappreciative of others and what they have done for him will lack power, will lack peace, and lack joy. And I want the power of God working in my life, moving the Spirit of God leading me in everything that I do. And the only way to achieve that is to make sure that our actions are lining up with the Word of God. And in this case, we're talking about thankfulness and being thankful, which means I need to line myself up with what the Word of God is saying and be thankful. Unthankfulness is so wicked that in Luke 6.35, Jesus connects it with evil. And I want you to look here in this, in this, you know, chapter 6, verse 35. If you got a Bible, you could pop it open. If not, just listen. You can read it later. But, but hear me on this. Jesus said, love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. See, we're to be kind even to those who are unthankful and those that are evil. But look at this. He puts unthankful right next to the evil. In other words, unthankful is bad. It's in the same category. Jesus' words, you know, he's putting this word unthankful in the same category as evil. And this most assuredly tells us that an unthankful attitude is evil in God's sight. How God sees unthankfulness is on the same level as evil. It's simply, you know, put simply, spiritually, it's spiritually criminal not to be thankful what we, for what we have in life. We're robbing ourselves is what we're doing. Even if it seems like what we have is like little in comparison to what others have, if we're being unthankful, and we're comparing ourselves to someone else's blessings. We're, we're being uh, getting into this attitude like, oh, he has this, she has that. No, no, no. We need to be thankful for what we have. Even if we feel we've worked hard and earned what we have, but you know we don't have what somebody else has, we should be thankful. Our jobs and opportunities could have been given to someone else but they were graciously given to us. If you have a job, be thankful, be gracious in that job. It may not be the best of jobs in your opinion, but you've got a job, you know? Others who need a job and a salary would be thankful to have your position and your income. Those who don't have one, we know that with the coronavirus and the things that's been going on, a lot of people lost jobs and they would be thankful to have a job. So if you have a job, be thankful. If you don't, thank God for something else. Thank God that you're breathing. You can always fall back on that. Even if we're sick, hey, I'm breathing and I'm taking a breath. God has given me the air that I breathe. There are people all over the world who don't have shelter, warmth, clean water, but we have access to it every day, and I'm thankful for that. When we remember that, it'll help you to be thankful for what you have and for every blessing that comes your way. Sometimes we get so unthankful and we start complaining and being unthankful about this or that, 
And there's all these things that we could be thankful for, and it's right there in front of our face. Unfortunately, we live in a season when people are so self-focused and self-consumed that they're, you know, rarely grateful for anything. You know, and a lot of times children, you know, you have to teach them to be thankful because they're oh, you know, they, they, they have that selfishness there. And you, you may not have taught it to them, but it just, it comes up in, that they give into their fleshly nature and they begin to be selfish and, they, and it begins to come out in their life. But the scripture says that we put away those childish things and we begin to count the things that we're thankful for and we're grateful for. The attitude is often short-lived and soon forgotten in many that, oh, they see something to be thankful for, but then they find something to be unthankful for in the very next breath. It doesn't last too long. But the Bible, and here's what I wanted to get to right here is the Bible literally commands us to be thankful. In Colossians 3.15, it says, Be ye thankful. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, a verse that I memorized when I was young, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Literally, it says to be thankful in everything. In everything. No, I'm not thankful about the of everything. It's in everything. In other words, despite the circumstance that I'm in, I'm going to be thankful anyways. In everything, I'm going to be thankful. Even if things seem to be going wrong around us, we can still stop and count our blessings. We may feel besieged by our needs at the present moment, but the fact is we each have many reasons to be thankful. At this time of the year, when we are especially reminded to stop and think about what we are thankful, grateful, and appreciative for, it would be good for us to consider what we've been thankful for, grateful for, and appreciative for all year round. Not just this month. What have we been thankful for throughout the, you know, this past year? This year's been really rough, rough. I mean, I've seen the memes, I've seen the comments on social media and everything about 2020 and and I know we all want to get this year over with and done. We want to get past it because of the coronavirus. We've got the election and all the pol politics and everything. And it's like, ah, you know, we want to be done with that. But understand that despite that, there were still things. I believe this wholeheartedly. that There were still things this past year where God showed himself faithful to you. What can you be thankful for in that? Recognize that. Say those things to God. And here's some questions. And, and look, before I get to these questions, I'm not trying to attack anyone who's going through a hard time. We've all gone through hard times at various seasons in life. I simply believe it's healthy for each one of us to stop and reflect on what we have to be thankful for today and every day, not just this month, the whole year. And so here's some questions to ask ourselves right now. Number one, just real simple, what are you thankful for? That's just number one, and just begin to think about that. Number two, what has God done for you this year that has been a blessing to you? And we've just talked about that for a moment. Think about that. What has God blessed you in this past year? What have others done for you that deserves a special thank you? What has somebody else done for you? How have they blessed you? How can you show your thankfulness and your gratitude to them? You know, one of the things we can do is just simply pray for that person and pray for those individuals who has shown us kindness, who has been thankful, uh, and who has blessed us so that we can be thankful to them. Just pray over them. These are questions that are healthy to ask. Remember, Jesus said unthankfulness. He put it in the same category as evil. So you and I do not want to fall into that category. It's better to self-correct right now and to be corrected than to end up in that awful condition of being unthankful. Living in the condition of unthankfulness is miserable. We simply need to put words of thanksgiving in our hearts, in our mouths. We need to put it there all the time, every single day. Church, I hope that this has helped you. It's literally made me want to just look back, reflect, make a list on the things I'm thankful for. I've got a picture of my children behind me from, you know, a few years ago when we moved into this house. I'm thankful for my children. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the help of, health of my family. And 
you know, before I end, let me say, I, I, I want to say this to you. Thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you to, you know, I thank God for you, for your support, um, letting me share this, this, this video with you. Um, thank you for your prayers. Thank you, church, for your financial support, those of you that give. On behalf of the elders, I can definitely say thank you and that we love you and we are praying for you. This past Tuesday morning in our weekly time of prayer, um, you know, some of the elders, we, we get together and we pray we listed every single one of your names that we have in our database just this past Tuesday. Why? Because we're thankful for you and we want to pray over you. Even if you don't send in a prayer request, we're praying for you. We want God to bless you. We are so, so thankful for you. We love you. All right, that's it for tonight for this Midweek Word. We'll be back on on Sunday at 10 a.m. right here in the same way that you're listening now on Facebook Facebook, and YouTube. And remember, be thankful in all things. God bless.